So now, uh, Brooklyn, New York is in the house. DJ Radar. Um, yeah. So he's the inventor of the famous turntablism transcription methodology. It is a unique calculus based notation system for electronic music and DJing. At Scratchcom 2000, Qbert awarded him with the DJ Qbert Legendary Scholarship for his pioneering work, and he's a true ambassador of Scratch Science. We are looking forward to present his lecture on Ancient of Turntablism at this year's Sample Music Festival. Give it up for DJ Ray Down, please. Thank you, thank you so much. It's great to be here in Berlin again. Uh, I was here uh, a couple of years ago giving a lecture at uh, the um, Urban Spree uh, Gallery on uh, a similar thing I'm about to talk about tonight. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, um, my system of notation and turntablism turn in general and music notation as it relates to what happened in ancient history, which most of us were ever taught. So, um, you know, I was raised in uh, the Western school system, and in that Western school system, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things in history were left out. And uh, the cool thing is now we're coming into an era of, um, can, can you turn my volume up a little bit? Can you turn it up a little bit? A little bit more? A little bit more? Yeah, great. So yeah, now we're coming into an era of uh, information uh, connections where everybody can you know, connect to each other, whether it's Wikipedia or YouTube, and uh, we can find uh, a lot of the information that uh, we missed. Because when I was raised, um, as far as music notation, I was taught that there was only one type of music notation. I was taught that uh, the only type of music notation uh, was basically, you know, classical, Western, um, European uh, music that came out of the monastic monk, you know, tradition of, uh, you know, like the Catholic Church and things like that. But in my research, you know, I found that that was totally wrong. That's, that's totally not the case. And so first, uh, we're going to look, we're going to go back to Egypt because um, a lot of, uh, you know, everything usually starts with Europe, but you know, in my research, I found that the first type of, the oldest known real music notation uh, is really based in uh, the Egyptian notation over here in the upper left-hand corner, and you can see that it's actually um, a really advanced form of notation. It's totally crazy. When I saw this, it totally blew my mind. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. And uh, a woman named uh, Teresa Saar, she released a book called uh, Notations 21, um, honoring John Cage's uh, earlier uh, uh, notations book, but um, and she released that book. If you try to buy that book now, you know, it might be like two thousand dollars. You know, every time I give a lecture and I talk about this book, the, the, the price increases like you know, a thousand dollars every time. Um, and so, yeah, in this uh, in this book, she sh she released uh, you know, this document that's an actual um, Egyptian music notation document, and you can see that the Egyptians they were using um, circular uh, nodes to represent sequencing kind of like fruity loops and then if you have like an interval or a chord you see there's three circles you know together and uh, and then you can even see that somebody actually bust over the words at the top and they wrote Greek over it you can if you look at the upper uh, corner you can see there's Greek written over the the original whatever they had written in Egyptian and uh, so and they were using volume as actual volume which was really interesting as far as you know, geometry is concerned, the, the size of the node represented uh, the actual intensity of the volume, while the colors actually uh, represented different notes. And you can see they have the scale all the way on the side, all the way here on the left. This scale right here, you know, you can see that uh, it's an actual, you know, uh, uh, 12 half steps and each one has its own different color. And, you know, and that's an actual piece right there. And, I, and that just blew my mind when I saw that. So, all, all these other examples on the screen are just to show, you know, uh, how you know we have this modern technology. But there's a lot of ancient things that w were happening that um, you know that relate to that. And you know, some people even say that you know a lot of it's uh, kind of conspiracy theory. But some people say that you know the Egyptians were able to use sounds to do even other things like levitate, you know, objects and things like that, which we're able to do now. More recently, we've just been able to levitate objects using just sound. But some people say they were able to use that a long time ago and actually, you know, move the bricks and stuff like that to build pyramids. And so, um, and then also here in the, the lower right-hand corner, we have, uh, um, this is uh, 
an Egyptian uh, calendar, kind of, and, and you see that it looks like turntables, right? It looks just like a bunch of turntables, and, you know, um, Egyptian geometry was, you know, really uh, extensive and intense. And so now we're going to go to the next frame. And uh, what's also important is that, if you can see in the upper right-hand corner, uh, that's the original Library of Alexandria that was burned, uh, you know, uh, by Alexander. And, uh, you know, that, that's just showing that the Western you know, conquest of, of non-Western uh, you know, notations or, or information or, or anything, you know, all these things were destroyed and hidden and, you know, and locked away in a lot of, so you might have, you know, the Smithsonian or a lot of different institutions in their basements, kind of like in that, in Indiana Jones and the Lost Ark, there's a lot of stuff that we still never even seen. Somebody might pull out a, a, a file one day, it'll blow our minds and find that people were doing um, stuff that we're doing right now. So, uh, so under the next, and then I found in my research in Tibet, they, but this was before the monastic uh, uh, Catholic tradition, uh, they were using actual waves. And if you look right here, you can see these are actual waves. And you know, in their uh, Tibetan chants. They were, you know, just using waves to represent the, the you know, the, the, the rise and fall of pitch over time. And my system of notation, uh, TTM, the Turntable's Transcription Methodology, that I invented in 1999, is basically graphing the movement of the record over time. Very, very simple. And then anytime you have a click of the cross fader, it's a black dot. Or if it's, um, if you're trying to separate scratches, you're using open fader symbols. But, you know, all this stuff actually predated uh, the, this, this wave notation right here, you know, predated the European notation. And then, what really blew my mind in my research was that if you look right here at the uh, lower left-hand corner, the early European notation actually was more influenced by the actual Tibetan notation. This is the early noons, they call them noons before, you know, they call them classical notes or whatever, and these noons, they look just like a lot like TTM, like I blew my mind when I saw it. I was like, well, it's just, you know, it looks like some, uh, some, some scratches, like some, some military scratches. Um, looks like, you know, a stab, like this right here looks like a stab, this, um, and I'll do a stab. Right, it looks like a stab, and then like, lower down, it looks like some, you know, it looks like some like, it looks like some, you know, slices and, uh, you know, different types of scratches. So, uh, as it evolved, it went from this, these waves, into these, uh, you know, these more square-like nodes, and then it went, you know, into this and this, and then, you know, what we have today, and now what we have today just totally, you know, totally stagnated, um, you know, since, you know, modern times, and, and that's what's really amazing. Um, it's great that people like, you know, Alex um, um, Sonnefeld ha uh, is, uh, you know, using S notation to, to further, uh, you know, expand the vocabulary and, and take the, the classical music to a, to a whole new level, because, I think a lot of times within uh, teaching, um, you know, what happens is they feel like, hey, what well, worked for us is going to work for you. But, you know, information and everything is always evolving. And then what ended up happening is that uh, people started uh, using uh, these, uh, the waves over the letters. Um, and this was early Latin, you know, vocal notation. And it's also very simple, uh, similar to the Russian uh, the, uh, notations and the, um, you know the uh, the, uh, the 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 area like the region uh, the visual, um, Central Europe um, Western I'm sorry Eastern Europe Lower Eastern Europe and uh, the, the cool thing about this is that you can see that these uh, these notations they they were actually doing more complex stuff than a lot of times than you might see a, a hymn a book um, you know right now at these times. And, uh, and right here in the lower corner, this is uh, some more, you know, the Tibetan notation. And then this is here, this is, uh, let's see, it's like that. That's uh, me transcribing, uh, you know, uh, a, a score. And uh, a, a Portis head score, actually. And uh, uh, by, uh, you know, uh, Portis head. So let me see, so the next one, I'm gonna go to the next. Um, and this is the same thing, where we can see that over time, you know, these all these early symbols um, are were called uh, diacritics. We call them diacritics in music notation, and uh, diacritics are just uh, things that can enhance 
the sound. So like, you know, you have umlaut and you know, different symbols with dots and things and slashes and other, um, each, each language has its own uh, set of diacritics to, to help express that thing more, more easily. So, um, you know, you might, especially uh, languages like Arabic and, you know, a lot of European languages use a lot of, um, you know, dots and slashes and, and things over the letters. Because um, what's important to note is that um, language is the first music notation because when you see a character and you want to, you know, um, vocalize that character, you're actually reciting music in a sense. So, you know, I'm not going to really focus on characters and uh, uh, vocal notation, I mean, as far as uh, just words and, and writing, but you can see the, uh, the, the influence that they both have on each other. All right, and yeah, right here are the Byzantine uh, symbols right here. And in Byzantine music, they still use these symbols. And a lot of this looks, you know, a lot like this is uh, uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels I transcribed um, by uh, DJ Premier, him scratching over uh, Jamie's track. And it's, you know, it's like Dirty Rotten, rotten Scoundrels. But um, uh, yeah, so, and you can see here, here's some, some writing in Latin, and it's got the diacritics over it. And you know it looks really advanced. It's, it's uh, you know I never saw anything like this in school. When I when I had my music class, they're just like, hey, this is what it is. This, you know this is what a, a 16th note looks like. They never told me the history of actual music notation, and that's why I'm bringing it here to you all today. So we're gonna discover music notations that are pre 20th century, before the 20th century, because once the 20th century hit, there's so many amazing uh, music notation styles that came out. Um, and this is a recent find, and you'll see a lot of blogs will uh, talk about this. They'll be like, hey, we just found this new thing. It's 900, it's around the year 900. It's the oldest music notation, but it's not because the Egyptian uh, notation predates that. And, you know, so that even shows that all these blogs are even, you know, promoting uh, um, uh, uh, the Eurocentric idea that only Europeans were able to invent, you know, music notation. Um, but this is an amazing find because this is really old, and this even looks, you know, it looks a lot like TTM, it looks a lot like what Alex is doing. So the S notation is really amazing that, that this finds. So this is from the year 900. Next, now we're going to talk about just circular notation in general. Um, it, in, in my research, I found that ancient cultures in ancient times, you know, they were using astrology and geometry, and everything was overlapped um, with their religion and all those things. Um, Calendars and, and timekeeping devices were some of the first, um, you know, references of cycles and 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 uh, um, loops and, and using a circular loop. So right here on the, the left, we have a uh, you know a calendar with, with different guys around uh, on the calendar. But this is an actual calendar that's you know influenced our 12-month calendar. This is was actually you know a 12-sided uh, calendar, and um, you know and this is uh, the the new. Uh, Library of Alexandria that kind of resembles uh, resembles that, which is kind of interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, so and right here at the bottom, this is a, a game, a West African game called uh, Mancala, and you know it's it's uh, you know it's kind of a sequencing type of a thing. It looks like a sequencer from far away, but you know it's just a game using you know beads or or uh, you know different types of uh, things. Great, great. Yeah, the volume is great. Um, yeah. So next, we'll move on. So then in my research I found, I found right, this right here really blew my mind. This is actual a Yoruba um, Nigerian um, digital witch um, notation. This was uh, the, the witches and warlocks of, of Nigeria uh, use this notational system. This, you know, looks a lot like, you know, looks like chromosomes. It looks like, you know, it looks like a, a lot of digital things, the early punch cards, you know, that we were using in the 70s and 60s. And, early 80s probably, um, and that really blew my mind, um, um, seeing all that stuff. The, the, and uh, right here at the upper right hand corner is uh, that same system. These are all, this is the, the, uh, the, the Yoruba um, digital notation. And what's interesting about Yoruba is that there's 500 words in Yoruba that are exactly the same as ancient Egyptian. So as of today, Yoruba is the, only, is the closest related language to ancient Egyptian. So a lot of the high priests, when Egypt fell, a lot of them went to West Africa and went to Nigeria specifically. And now they're one of the richest nations So, in, in Africa. Um, so now we're going to go to this bottom corner. This is a drum notation, a circular, circular drum notation that is uh, used in uh, 
used in uh, West Africa. And we can see here that you know what they what they have is uh, you know they'll have a drummer, um, they'll have a drum circle, and then um, you know they'll have people do certain rhythms, and you know those people, and maybe another uh, drummer will do. Will, there'll be a master rhythm, and then there's slave rhythms, a lot like MIDI, you know. And they'll and, and the drummers will control each other, and they're doing you know circuit like they have ciphers where they're doing circular uh, you know uh, patterns, but then somebody else has to do the other person's pattern, or, who, or the master drummer can control other people's patterns. So that's what all these like converging circles are. And uh, that's also the Egyptian flower of life. If you look right here, the, the, always to the left, that's a picture of like the flower of life. You might see a lot of tattoos like that. This is a Dogon symbol at the center of the screen. And uh, that's, you know, in Mali, the Dogon tribe. And uh, they're known for their, you know, use of astrology. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, they're able to see a lot of things that they're just finding now. And, and, they did, and you know, modern science doesn't know really how they figured out a lot of those things. But this is some of their notations. And you can see it looks a lot like, you know, some TTM stuff. Um, and uh, above, right here, that's, uh, this is also their, their uh, um, Dogon uh, notations that a person who went and studied with them, they're, they're uh, you know, reciting what the, what the Dogons uh, uh, were, were doing. And this is, uh, you know, Mansa Musa, one of the richest men in history, or people say he was the richest man in history. And I was just putting that there to see, to show... Uh, you know, the splendor of the time and then, you know, all, all the lines and, and all that stuff, uh, the angles and, and everything. Uh, so mathematics has always been a part of, you know, ancient human uh, uh, forms of communication. Now, this right here, the, right here, this whole uh, section right there, we see a lot of symbols that are, these are the, the Akan graphic system. And this is also a, an African uh, system. They have their own stock market where they were actually using, you know, symbols to say like, oh, the rise and fall of gold or, or whatever type of uh, commodities that they were locally trading in their, in, their, uh, in, in their markets and whatnot. So that just really blew my mind when I saw that. Like, you know, you just assume like, hey, stock market, all that stuff is, is, is a new thing. But, you know, they've been, uh, who knows how long they've been doing this. But, you know, it, people just, uh, there's a lot, a lot of um, old writings. These are some... Um, this is like Condoleezza uh, script. It just looks, you know, it looks so amazing. Like, it's just all based on, uh, it looks kind of like Arabic, but it's a lot different. It looks, uh, you know, it's just all based on waves. And, and, and on the note of waves, um, the, the, the main thing that uh, distinguishes my system, TTM, versus um, the Western, standard Western style of notation is that, uh, you know, it's kind of similar to quantum mechanics where you have you know, you have particles and you have waves. I'm using waves to represent, you know, uh, music, um, whereas, you know, classic notation is just using a sound. At, I mean, I'm using a, a particle, like a, just a, a, a symbol, symbolic notation to represent a sound. So you see a, a, a symbol and that symbol is representing a eighth note. But the thing is, is that there, could, there can be limitations to that. Um, but both things can work better for certain instruments. Like, I personally uh, b believe, like, uh, you know, Anthony Braxton, a, 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 an experimental jazz saxophonist who won the McCarthy, uh, MacArthur Grant, um, he once said that, you know, every, every instrument should have its own notation. Like, you know, trombones should have their own notation if you're doing slides, and why are, using the, why are they using the exact same notation as, as a, you know, you know, as a piano or, a, you know, as a trumpet? Like, you know, there should be trumpet notations that, that are based on, you know, three, having just three buttons or whatever. You know, so we're just at the you know forefront of all that. It's just great to see so many different types of notations out there. Uh, and uh, let's see. Now we're going to go to the next. And this is more uh, uh, Dogon uh, mathematics right here. This was uh, what I was talking about before. They were able to the Dogons were able to uh, prove uh, the existence of uh, of the star Sirius uh, of one of the hidden stars. And uh, even before scientists were able to, you know, do that recently, like they just recently found it. And uh, these are some other uh, West African systems. Um, and this is just to show you too, like you see right here, the, uh, you know, the Hebrew, uh, the star of David is, is, is also, you know, an ancient, um, uh, you know, uh, thing that parallels with a lot of cultures. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and uh, right here we see, you know, this is a circular system once again. And that kind of led me to, when, when I, I created what's, what I call a, a, a BPM protractor. And what this is right here, um, if, if any of y'all want to come up later and, and check this out, 
uh, I created this so that you can uh, find the uh, BPM of a record without using a BPM counter, just by measuring the distance between one beat. So if like, you know, one beat is 20 degrees, that's gonna be uh, 100 beats per minute. And that's what, you know, um, like DJ Swamp, when he first started releasing the, the no skip technology, or some people call it skip list, skip proof, and you know, then you know, Dirt Style, you know, came in and, and just you know, and totally refined it. And now we've got you know, so many amazing labels like and Cut and Paste and, and whatnot that are you know, making uh, skip proof records. And so I'll play a skip proof record for people who know what I'm talking about. This is the Secret and Why record. And I bought this you know, years ago. I was just you know, totally blew my mind. And with skip proof records. If you uh, move the, the needle, the, you, it'll still stay on beat. So I'll show you an example of that for people that aren't familiar. All right, so it's always going to stay on beat. No matter where you put the needle, it's always going to stay on beat because it's designed mathematically. This one in particular is at 100 beats per minute. And that's designed so that it's always going to just keep looping like that. And, and uh, it's never going to go off beat. All right, so now we're going to go to the next. And we're going to move a little bit faster. Now, back to the, uh, the ancient Hebrew stuff right here. These are some Hebrew characters. Each, each character in, in Hebrew you know, represents a number as well as a, a vocal sound. And uh, what's interesting, um, too, about that is that, you know, so you see a connection with mathematics. The movie uh, Pi kind of, um, I, I recommend everybody sees that, uh, uh, you know, um, th that movie kind of touches on that. And we see right here, there's a bunch of uh, notational systems that look a lot like TTM. Like this looks like an upside down, uh, you know, baby scratch or something right there. This looks like, you know, it looks a lot like TTM. That's why I have some, you know, images of TTM and stuff right here. And uh, what's also interesting is, that, um, you know, just to see the cross-pollination of cultures, there's actually a number of Japanese and Hebrew uh, connections as far as characters. These are characters that are the same in Japanese as they are in Hebrew. Not a lot, but there's a number. And then, you know, Japanese is, a, is a, an amalgamated language that has a lot of, uh, you know, they're always bringing in new uh, vocabulary, but they've been doing that for a very long time. And, uh, and this kind of relates to the, the idea of isolationism versus uh, diffusionism. And what we were taught in school is isolationism, that in ancient times, everybody was in these separate little tribes and they weren't communicating with each other. And, you know, and now we're all together and people are communicating, but that's the isolationist theory. But diffusionism is the idea that, hey, people are always, you know, communicating with each other and, you know, one person could walk from here to, you know, South Africa, or they could walk to, you know, China from here, you know? Um, or, you know, take a raft, you know, and, and, and walk. So, but from this ancient, all these ancient, you know, writings, we see that obviously people were um, interacting with each other. These are some Mende scripts. Um, a lot of the, uh, the, the Z tribe from, uh, the, um, the, the ancient uh, black Chinese Z tribe from uh, uh, China um, had a lot of connections with the Olmecs. Um, they, they came from, you know, from uh, uh, archaeologists are finding that they were coming from Asia, uh, coming into uh, the Americas. And these are some Mende scripts from West Africa. And uh, a lot of uh, some uh, Mende, uh, um, there was some Mende overlap with uh, ancient American Olmec um, culture, so they, they were going back and forth. And then this really blew my mind too when I found out that there was a whole other type of notational system by, by uh, you know, the Tamil culture uh, in Sri Lanka. You know, we have artists like MIA that are, you know, uh, she's from Sri Lanka. And, you know, uh, this notation system right here. It's like, it looks like kind of like Egyptian cartouches turned to the side. This was actually their uh, music notation system. This right here is also a system from uh, Mongolia. There's a whole other type of music notation system. And that blew my mind. I was like, there's so many systems. How can they just, you know, if you, even if you go to colleges, most advanced college programs, they're not showing you the Mongolian music notation, the you know, Tibetan music notation, Tamil music notation. But through the internet, you can find it all. So this is like maybe five years of research. Um, right here, this is just general Sumerian, uh, you know, the, the first writing uh, we know of human, you know, history of the first writings of uh, their symbols of, of cuneiform, you know, that le led to all of our forms of writings that we use today, like this right here. This is actually a, uh, a music, uh, you know, uh, 
score from uh, Sumeria from, from way back. And this right here is uh, another uh, West African, uh, um, it's not a music system, but it's, this is actually just a, a writing system. It just looks, you know, looks, looks really out there, looks, looks kind of uh, like some TTM stuff or some music notations. And here we go, now we're into, uh, we're, we're back to the uh, Tibetan notations right here. There's some more examples. And uh, these are some more of the diacritics that are, you see how these, uh, each of these things have different slants. You see that um, in this Mongolia, it's, they're saying that's either from the 19th century from either Mongolia or Tibet, we can see that they're using a really uh, advanced slants. And here are diacritics in Arabic as well, where you see uh, you know, different symbols above that in, in a lot of the um, more complex books. And uh, these are some more diacritics up here. Uh, these are like, you see this, uh, some Russian written up there. These are, um, you know, Byzantine uh, symbols. So in the Byzantine era, they're doing a lot of that. And this is uh, from Sumeria as well. This was uh, uh, me transcribing uh, the Diggable Planet's uh, Ninth Wonder Song. But, you know, it just looked kind of similar. So that's why I, I put those uh, parallels in there. And I'm gonna move fast. And this is some more of the, uh, the Byzantine uh, diacritics being used, and you know, you see all these slashes. Now, this is a cool system uh, called uh, Scratch Graphique, and uh, that's uh, from, from uh, France. So this is a, a, a scratch notation system that came after TTM, um, and uh, it's really cool because it looks a lot like, you know, a lot of, a lot of the Russian stuff, and uh, let me give that DJ the credit what his name is. Uh, his name is uh, Bert, it's, it, it, it's from Bert. He created that. Uh, and yeah, we'll move on to the next. Um, in Indian notations, with tabla notations, they have a whole complex system of, you know, notating the tabla music and the vocal inflections, which, you know, it's kind of like scratching too, with a lot of the, you know, and beatboxing and the overlapping of basically scatting, because, you know, I was just ex explaining to a friend last night that a lot of turntablism is like, it's kind of like scatting. So now we're gonna move really fast. We got a couple minutes left. Um, and yeah, we see Japanese systems right here. Uh, you know, th these are uh, you know cool systems, but this is just you know more structural. I mean, more uh, character based. I'm just showing characters. And here's a actual circular uh, disc from Crete that actually has uh, you know um, symbols, characters kind of spiraling around a lot like a vinyl. And that was kind of interesting. And this right here looks like a drum machine. And uh, you know, if you want to find all the names and the dates, you can go to uh, the website, um, you know, the ttmacademy.org. And this is another Sumerian tablet. And that just kind of blew my mind, you know, to see these circular discs and all these things that look like a lot of uh, different mo modern technologies. This is uh, one of the oldest uh, instruments found from thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And uh, yeah, these are just some more um, systems from uh, you know the past couple hundred, you know, 500 years. And uh, let's keep moving forward. We have the old hymn scripts, the uh, ancient old hymn scripts from uh, from Ireland. Uh, this was the original. This is a, a rendering of the Yorkshire woman, who's the oldest woman from uh, the oldest woman of the UK. But they won't teach this in school because uh, you know some people are teaching. If you look up, and you know there's been an uproar because due to imperialism and, and colonialism, you know they don't want to teach that the first per woman from the UK was was black. And this was an actual rendering that the Yorkshire Museum did. And uh, there's more of the, the, the digital notation, but this was all pre uh, pre Celtic. The uh, the Igbo and the Oaken, so the Oaken scripts are the early, you know, the Irish stuff. Uh, I mean, or, or the stuff from that area, but you know, it relates um, exactly to a lot of the Igbo uh, scripts that were um, West African scripts that were before that. And we'll fly through these. These are just maps, uh, maps and star charts, different different cultures, uh, the Asian star charts the I Ching, uh, and also constellations. I was being able to see you know, the difference between constellations. Uh, I mean, uh, these constellations look a, a lot like scratch notation, as you can see over to the left, the Great Dipper, that Asian star chart. And, uh, and we keep moving on. And up in the upper left-hand corner is the Navajo uh, weather music, I mean, a uh, weather notation system. They would write down the weathers, and they would do rain dances, and they'd have symbols, kind of like our modern uh, meteorology, uh, you know, symbols you see on your phone, where it's, you know, it's a rainy day, a sunny day. They were doing all those things, and uh, you know, and that was somebody like you know that wrote it down in the, in the 1900s, and uh, and then at the bottom left-hand corner is Adam's calendar from South Africa, which is really really old. I can't even remember the dates in that, but that that's super old. This is just more you know geometric uh, of things that are going on, and you know we see pyramids and, and shapes. At the upper left-hand corner is a Quaker 
an old American Quaker uh, music notation of European immigrants, religious immigrants that came uh, to the U.S. And here we see, uh, this was uh, different cultures' view of uh, like parallel dimensions and uh, the Egyptian view versus you know, some European views. Um, and, uh, and parallel dimensions kind of relates to the idea of you know, tracks that are existing on their own, but you know, like the most good record, um, that are parallel to each other, but you know, they're existing and they're not really affecting each other. Whereas a general song is something that's you know, one thing that's strung together. All right, and these are just uh, examples. Right here is a, is a Roman, actually. It's an ancient Latin uh, Roman. Uh, it looks like a, like a mixer. It looks just like a, 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 a mixer, but it's an abacus. You know, it's an ancient Roman abacus. You know, abacus have been used from, throughout history. This was the instrument they found in South America. They don't even know what it was for. They still haven't figured out, or maybe they do know, and they're just not telling us. And, uh, and so, yeah, this is um, timekeeping devices, ancient timekeeping devices, um, you know, with all of our equipment now, we're, we're always dealing with timekeeping. Um, these are water clocks, and uh, these are just different types of clocks, the ancient uh, and systems of, of counting and numeration, as you can see, Mayan versus, you know, Chinese, all, all these different ones. Now, this was like the first sketch that I did of the Vortex. When I, when I, before I created this, um, you know, these were the, the first sketches of, of just uh, creating, um, starting with, um, you know, a uh, circle and then expanding into different uh, higher dimensions for like triangle, three-sided, a square is four-sided, pent pentagram, five-sided, hexagon, six-sided, like just, that's what that chart is doing right there, the, the geometry vortex, and then just paralleling that with Mayan calendar and, you know, their systems of really, really complex systems of, of mechanics and, and uh, notation. This is a German, uh, uh, um, one of the famous German artists, uh, Albert Dürer, and uh, you know th these are his uh, his designs, his notations, and all these things are amazing. And what's also interesting about Albert Dürer that I especially want to say here in Germany is that uh, you know his family came from Eastern Europe, and they actually had to buy a Moorish, uh, a Black European, uh, you know, seal, and they bought the last name Dürer. They had like Eastern European last name, but Albert Dürer actually his his father actually changed the name to a to a, to a Black German name. But you know when Queen, is, when Queen Isabella expelled all the non-whites in, in 1492, you know all that history was erased, and, and most people don't realize that um, there were heterogeneous populations, meaning uh, people of all different races, living here in Europe before uh, modern times. It wasn't just like oh people just started immigrating here. People there were, there were always Asian and African people here in Europe. Okay, so yeah, so in, in closing, um, yeah, these are just more more charts. More crazy designs. We have a uh, uh, dance notation from the um, from the 1700s. The overlap of French and, and uh, Haitian culture and, and the African traditions of writing in the ground. And, and you can see like there's actual they were actually writing music notations, you know, on the ground and, and making books like that. That book up in the left hand corner is actually the breakdown. The whole breakdown was actually a slave dance that you know was just called the breakdown and from the from the 1800s, and, uh, and now we use that term, you know, in terms of ableism and, and all that stuff. So there's dance notations, fencing notations, that's Da Vinci, color notations, and, and uh, you know, this is uh, Jan Mitzer, you know, um, uh, and, we're, and look, you can see this kind of parallels to if you see a needle close up, it looks a lot like his designs, like all his designs. He already made all the designs that we're just kind of just getting into now, like he, even with Buckmaster Fuller and all these things. Kind of all that to Jim Mitzer. This is um, the last thing I have to say is yeah, is animation and, and vinyl um, being able to we can use vinyl to actually animate as well. And, and as we see here, these are kind of the history of animation and zoetropes and, and things like that. Uh, camera obscura. We're using cameras right now. You know, the turntablists are using everything, especially turntablists my, like myself that are focused on straight to YouTube turntables, and I'm not worried about clubs. And uh, and then this is. The um, last thing I have to say, yeah, is uh, upper left-hand corner is uh, um, that is uh, you know um, uh, the first book called the Book of Optics. That was the first book on on angles and 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 things like that. Um, and that was a, a Islamic uh, a writer, and uh, you know all that's that's kind of been suppressed. And yeah, and lastly we've got holograms. You know, MIA hologram, Tupac hologram, but they were using holograms. Before modern, time, before the 20th century, and even the French government right here was using holograms with their military uh, to try to scare people. Like that's a big hand in the darkness, and they're trying to use holograms to scare people. And that's it. And all this 
and you can get through, and I'm, I'm releasing this all in a book called Pre 20th Century Arts and Sciences. So it's kind of a, a look at at all arts and sciences as it relates to turntablism. So what you did, I am very excited. There was a fastest lecture from the guest speaker. So forget because of the delay, we have to hurry a little bit. So thank you very much. Way down, New York's in the house, and you're up, yeah. Thanks so much. Welcome. So, and next we have. Uh, <laughs>